this particular webinar, over 1,300 people are scheduled to join, which really tells me the need people have for this content. We, as you all know, are facing an unprecedented epidemic in our lifetime. Stress and anxiety is incredibly high right now, along with fear and panic. I was on the phone with other chief wellness officers yesterday, and everybody is experiencing what we are experiencing here. During times like this, we have got to look for some silver linings. We have got to think about what can we do for each other to help each other, to be kind, to care about each other more so than ever. And we've got to also make each other smile. So I'm going to start with a story in the hopes to touch your heart a little bit, to give you hope during this time. Well, there were two twin boys, seven years of age, getting ready to turn eight. One was an extreme optimist and looked at the world through rose-colored glasses. The other was an extreme pessimist, looked at the world through dark-colored glasses. Their mom was an extreme optimist. So the pessimistic little twin was really driving her crazy. So she went and got some consultations from mental health providers, her pediatrician, a nurse practitioner. And one day she was talking to a psychologist and she said, please give me a solution. How do I turn my little pessimistic twin into being an optimist. And the psychologist said, well, on the twins' eighth birthday, I want you to get your little pessimist any toy or game he could ever dream of. And she said, I kind of see the logic in that, but what do I do for my little optimist? And the psychologist said, I want you to bring in a huge crate full of manure. And she said, what? How could I do that to my little optimistic boy? But she had tried everything else. So she was ready to try this solution. On the day of the twins' eighth birthday, she peeked into her little pessimist boy's room. He was in the middle of all these beautifully wrapped gifts, unwrapping them, tearing off the paper and grumbling about each gift. I didn't want Junior Monopoly, I wanted Scrabble. I didn't want a red fire truck, I wanted a gray one. And the mother shook her head and thought this little boy is never gonna change. Then she went and peeked into the little optimist room. This little boy was on top of this huge crate full of manure, digging through it furiously saying, where there's manure, there has got to be a pony. So I want to use that story to say we must have hope. Yes, there is a lot 
of terrible things happening right now. But I guarantee you, there is going to be a lot of silver linings that are happening as well. I was on a phone video conference this morning with some of my faculty. And one of my faculty said, Burn, it's incredible. Just in the past couple of days, when you would not see families out walking together, we are seeing that now. This is a time where families have the opportunity to reconnect again. And I'll be talking about activities that can be done together. So in addition to the, in addition to this COVID virus pandemic, we also have a stress and anxiety pandemic that is happening. I'm sure many of you are confronting this scenario in the stores at this time. I got a call yesterday from my daughter and she said, Mom, do you have extra toilet paper? Because I seriously am running out. I have tried to get it everywhere. And a lot of people have asked me, Bern, why are people doing this? We have to remember when people feel out of control with some aspect of their lives, which people do with this virus, they're gonna attempt to gain control over other aspects. One of them, going out and making sure your house is well stocked with paper products. Well, there is one group, as you see on the slide, who are, is loving life right now, including my two pugs. On the left is Bose, he's four, on the right, my little honeydew melon. They are loving being with mom and dad more now that we are home. So finding silver linings, we are going to find more silver linings during this pandemic. So why is COVID-19 triggering so many mental health issues? Just the fear of spread of this virus, the isolation that people are experiencing, it is leading people to having feelings of stress, anxiety, despair, People fear loss of loved ones. We, get, we are getting children in emergency rooms throughout the country with panic and anxiety because they're fearful of what they've heard, that their grandparents, their parents may die from this virus. People have fear and they're seeing the number of businesses that have had to close, job security, financial security, mindset switch from thriving to survival. This is triggering feelings of hopelessness because people don't feel like they have control. We've got to take control over the things that we have control about. And one of those things is how we are connecting with our families, what we are doing to prevent the spread of the virus. This is also promoting social withdrawal. 
And I really want us to get away from the language of social distancing. We need virtual social interaction like crazy right now. We've got to stop saying we've got to do social distancing. Distancing is extremely important. But let's talk about physical distancing, not social distancing. So I have a different set of responses to stress than each and every one of you, probably. But people present with stress sim symptoms incredibly with a lot of variation. Some people go into fight mode. Some people go into flight mode. The important thing is to start to get really in tuned to how you feel physically. How do your children feel physically when they are stressed, anxious, or depressed? How do you feel emotionally when you are stressed, anxious, or depressed? Some people will withdraw when they're feeling stressed or anxious. Other people get very irritable and angry when they're getting stressed or anxious. It is so important to be in tune with our own cues to how we were, are dealing with COVID-19. If we can monitor our emotions and our physical symptoms, we can regulate those more effectively early before we begin to suffer adverse effects. Too much stress, anxiety, or depression can interfere with our functioning. And I really can't emphasize this enough. If you are feeling anxious or depressed to the point where it's interfering with your ability to think and to function, now is the time to ask for help. We shouldn't feel bad about asking for help. Wherever you are, we are here at Ohio State. We have a fabulous employee assistance program. We have a fabulous student counseling and consultative service who are equipped with wonderful professionals that are prepared to talk with you virtually. Please do not hesitate to ask for help. One of the best things that we can do as parents to help our children is to remain calm. There was a concept invented decades ago. It was called the emotional contagion hypothesis. And basically what that says is if you yourself as a parent is showing stress, depression, or anxiety, it will be emotionally cast off to your child. And they're going to pick up that stress and anxiety. So my message today for parents, one of the best things you can do for your children is to manage your emotions, to stay as calm as you possibly can. Your role modeling of how you deal with this pandemic will absolutely transfer to your children. 
if you are coping well, you're going to be teaching your children how to cope well too. There's a lot of studies that have been done on what's the best evidence-based strategies to cope with stress, anxiety, and depression. We know what works. We are implementing these programs at Ohio State. But I encourage all of you, take the time now to practice being in the present moment. Two of the most wasted emotions are worry about the future and guilt about the past. If we as parents can stay more mindful in the present moment, we're going to benefit by experiencing less depression and anxiety and stress. I like to give some simple exercises to be able to get you to learn to focus in the present moment and be more mindful. Take a piece of gum, put it in your mouth, chew it, and count the number of times that you have to chew it until it loses its flavor. When you go on a walk, bring your brain back to what you are seeing, what are you feeling, what are you experiencing as you walk. If your mind starts to wonder on what you need to do today, what might happen as a result of this pandemic, consciously bring your mind back to what are you seeing, what are you feeling, what are you smelling, and what are you hearing. We have wonderful mindfulness programs here like mindfulness in motion, that we can help you to cultivate these skills. We also know cognitive behavior therapy or skills building is the best evidence-based treatment for mild to moderate depression and anxiety. Cognitive behavioral skills are skills that we learn from cognitive behavior therapy, which basically stresses that how we think directly relates to how we feel and how we behave. We have a program that we will be offering synchronously to our faculty over the next few months. That program is called MindStrong. So if you would like to develop more of these CBT skills, you will want to email mindstrong.osu.edu. Gratitude is another area that we really can benefit from tremendously. As dismal as you might think things are today, if in your homes, if in your units, you can put up this gratitude board like our CCTS faculty and staff did, it will help us to stay focused on what we have, not what we don't have. I'd encourage you parents that are listening, get up every morning and say to your kids, let's say two or three things today that we're grateful for. But if you get into that habit every single day, you will experience less stress. I will often say to myself, I'm too blessed to be stressed. 
as I began to feel little things starting to trigger in terms of stress within me. Also, we have got the most wonderful resource here. It's called Just Breathe. Anybody can access that. You can go to go.osu.edu, Just Breathe. That website has wonderful resources for stress reduction on it. What I want you to do now as I do it is sync your breathing with the diagram that you are seeing on the slide. Evidence says just five slow, deep breaths in through our nose, out through our mouth can really cut stress and lower blood pressure. So let's take just a moment now and take five deep breaths, sinking it with the figure on the slide. Okay, so let's talk again about cognitive behavior therapy and skills building. We are going to be launching, because we have heard from so many of you that you would like more online program offerings over the next few months. We will be launching an eight session program on Wednesdays at noon time that's going to help you build cognitive behavioral mindfulness skills, resiliency skills, better sleep habits, activities while you are at home. But again, in CBT, we teach people how they think, directly relates to how they feel and how they behave. We teach the ABCs in cognitive behavioral skills building. We teach people how to monitor for a stressful event, how to stop the negative thought that follows, how to replace it with positive, so we feel better. So let's take an example. The COVID-19 pandemic. There is so much information, social media, news coming at us so quickly. And our thinking might be, oh no, what happens if I get this virus? Am I going to do well? Am I going to die? These thoughts are crossing people's mind, especially if they're in a vulnerable group. People above 60, people who are immunosuppressed or with chronic disease. So if you're thinking, what happens if I get this? It's going to be so terrible. I want you to stop that thought, and I want you to think. The far majority of people who can track this fully recover. I want you to say to yourself, I'm doing all that I can to contract this virus as well as to spread it. I want you to think this is temporary, this will pass, and we will all make it through it together. It is critical to stop those negative thoughts, turn them around to a positive, and you will experience less stress, anxiety, and depression if you make a constant habit of that. So right now, I want you to think back to a recent time 
where you felt anxious, stressed, depressed, or angry. Maybe it was yesterday. Maybe it was today. What was your trigger that started that thought? You can't maybe control that trigger, but you can control how you think. But I want you to start to connect and to help your children to do that that their thinking directly relates to how they feel and how they behave. And what could you do to stop that negative thought, turn it around to a positive to feel better? So the next time you notice your mood has changed, it's intensified, you're getting more stressed or more anxious, I want you to stop and ask yourself, what was just going through my mind right this minute? Chances are it was a negative thought. Again, if we can monitor our thinking, catch our negative thoughts, turn them around to positive, we will feel much emotionally better. Just like behavior change takes 30 to 60 days, so does thought change. Most children have developed their patterns of thinking by the time they're seven or eight years of age. So again, it takes practice to be able to turn that thinking around. So I'm asking you for the next 30 days, really monitor your stress, your anxiety. Say to yourself, if it's increasing, what am I thinking about right now? I'm gonna stop it, turn it around to a positive so I feel better. And whether you visualize a stop sign a rubber band, you put a rubber band on your wrist and you snap it when you have a negative thought. Whatever helps you to pick up your negative thoughts and turn them around to positive, that's great. Problem solving, a four-step process that I encourage everybody to use and teach to your children. What is the problem we're currently having? What are the possible causes? Then brainstorm two or three solutions to that problem, pick the best one, and then immediately act on it to feel a lot better. So many times we ruminate and ruminate on what to do versus enact this four-step problem-solving process, which will really lead to a lot less stress and anxiety. We have had the positive movement in psychology going for quite some time. We now know physiologically the brain is very much like a computer. We put positive in, we will have positive come out. We can do this, even if you tend to be a negative thinker. One of the first things you can do to program your brain for more positivity is to practice positive self-talk 10 times in the morning and 10 times at night. It is honestly reprogramming your brain to think more positively. Write your positive statements down on an index card. Put it where you brush your teeth every morning, every night. But do it, even if you feel silly doing it at first, 
if you can get into the habit of saying two or three positive self statements every morning and every night, you are going to experience less stress and anxiety. We talked about how important it is to stay in the present moment, to teach our children to stay in the present moment. I have a great book that you can read as a family that hits the point of mindfulness home. It's called The Present by Spencer Johnson. When one of my daughters was only nine years of age, that was her favorite book in the whole wide world. It's the story about a boy who meets a wiser old man. And that man tells the little boy all about this present and that it's the best gift in the world. Well, that little boy assumes it's a material present and spends a lot of his life looking to find it. But as he grows older, what he realizes was it wasn't a material gift at all. It was the ability to be here right now in the present moment. So to worry less, get more mindful in the present moment. Teach your children how to do that as well. As I mentioned, we're getting bombarded social media exposure of COVID-19, graphic images of people in intensive care units. One of the other best things that you can do is limit the amount of yours and your children's exposure to these types of frightening images. I'm gonna share reliable web sources for you to get daily updates on the virus, but please refrain from keeping the television on when the news is reporting very distressing images and your children are there. Limit the amount of information of those images and frightening statistics as you can. So one of the best ways that you can deal positively with this pandemic is to take time to take care of yourself. And you might say, Bern, are you kidding me? I'm at home now with three or four children who want my attention, whatever it is. I'm just asking you, even if it's 10 minutes twice a day, do something for yourself to take better self-care. We need to keep our immune systems at their best right now. And the most awesome way to do that, reduce our stress response, because that kicks in the hormone cortisol that it has a lot of negative effects on our body, including decreasing our immune system. Eat as healthy as you can. 80% healthy foods, 20% what I call want foods. Things that you just love to eat that aren't necessarily the best for us, but they're emotional comfort. Be careful, 80-20. And then physical activity is so critical right now. My gym is closed, as I know most others are. I'm getting outside more now, which is great to do my walks and my runs. In the house, you can do awesome things for physical activity. 
if you do stairs, walk the stairs for 10 minutes a day at least. That's great exercise. Have a dance party with your children. Put on some good music, dance, have fun with them. Take time to connect and make sure you're getting at least seven hours of sleep. The news is gonna disrupt sleep for many people. So I really encourage you, don't turn on the news within a couple hours before you go to bed at night. Establish a routine and again, get at least seven hours of sleep a night. Other strategies for yourself, we already talked about physical activity, eating healthy, manage your energy. Now that we're home more, we're apt to sit more, which will drain us. So keep thinking about standing, moving as much as you can. Practice guided imagery. If you go on YouTube, there's a ton of YouTube videos to practice guided imagery. Read five to 10 minutes every morning in a positive book. You and your children can do that together. And at this time, if you can't see loved ones, grandparents, tune in to calls with them, social media, Facebook, FaceTime, those sorts of things, so we don't distance socially, only physically. We talked about just five big deep breaths. Get into the habit of doing that with your children, maybe once an hour. And you can get together as a family to make a plan for how to deal with things that might be causing you stress. But focus on the things you have control over, not things that you don't. It's really important also to talk to somebody about how you're feeling. And many people, adults as well as children, love to write. So create a journal so you can be expressing your feelings some way, even if you can't talk to somebody about it. We are gonna get through this one bite of the bundle of carrots at a time. We will get through this. There is hope. Yes, we have a challenging time ahead of us, but there are a lot of silver linings that are gonna come out of this. Don't be afraid to say no now, or don't feel guilty about saying no. If you're feeling overly stressed, anxious, overwhelmed, it's okay. Maybe you can't do a lot of things you used to do. And as I mentioned, if you are experiencing symptoms that are interfering with your functioning, get help now. Not a month from now, but now. I wanted to show you a variety of stress management apps that are now available. At Ohio State, we have Virgin Pulse with Will. And so it's wonderful app that has so many great strategies to decrease stress and anxiety. Daily five minute sessions, mindfulness. Headspace now is providing their app for free for healthcare providers. I really encourage you to download that, use it, maybe just take five minutes of mindfulness on that app twice a day. 
So now I'm gonna finish my talk by discussing how we should be dealing with this pandemic with our children. The first thing you wanna do if you haven't already, you wanna ask your children, what do you know about the coronavirus and what is worrying you? It is critical to get children to talk about how they're feeling. Oftentimes, children's fears are much worse than the reality. Little toddlers and preschoolers, they have what we call magical thinking. They have a hard time expressing their feelings. You can learn a lot about what a three, four, or five-year-old is thinking by asking them how their dolls or stuffed animals are feeling. What is their bear thinking about what's going on right now? They often project their own thoughts and their feelings onto their stuffed animals or their dolls. One of the things we don't want to do is overwhelm our children with too much information. It's scary to them, but we do want to be honest and answer children's questions in a developmentally appropriate way, honestly and simply. What our kids need from us so desperately right now, providing reassurance to them that they are safe, that our nurses, our doctors and leaders are doing everything they can to prevent the spread of the virus. And that so many people who get this virus recover fully. But please remember, help your children avoid too much information and frightening images on the web or on the television. When young children get stressed and anxious, they often go back to a time when they felt more comfortable. They often regress. Maybe they're showing more temper tantrums now, more clinging behavior, maybe nightmares. So again, observe and stay in tune to how your children are responding to this pandemic and the changes they're experiencing. Older school age children and teens have difficulty concentrating, sleeping. Maybe teenagers, you're gonna see a lot of anger. Again, if you're seeing a lot of anger and irritability, it's probably because they're stressed anxious or depressed. School-age children as well as teenagers often get their stress out by physical complaints. They'll get headaches, they'll get stomach aches. So if your child's complaining of headaches and stomach aches, chances are it's nothing really serious, although you want to talk to your healthcare provider about that. But again, children all a lot of times manifest worry, stress, and anxiety by getting headaches and stomach aches. So some of the best tips for dealing with your children's anxiety. Get them talking or writing in a journal. Take the time to sit down and be in the present moment. Talk to them about how they're feeling. Help them with their thinking, turning things around if they're thinking negatively to positive. Plan structure into your day. That's really important while your children are at home. It's a good thing. Assign them a helpful task 
to do around the household, plan some spring cleaning together, cook a healthy meal together. This is a time for families really to come together with good activities. Encourage physical activity. Start to take walks with your children. As I mentioned, if you're in the house, put on a YouTube. There's all sorts of wonderful physical activities that you could be doing with your children in the house. Take the time to work a little bit with them every day on their coping skills, their cognitive behavioral skills, because not only will that help them through this pandemic, but that's going to help them build skills they can use for the rest of their entire lives. Resiliency skills can be built in children as well as in adults. And these are nine resiliency skills that you can be working on during this time when you're home with your children. Gratitude, again, it's such a great way to instill an attitude of gratitude every day in yourselves and in your children. I promise you, you will see a great outcome of just being grateful on a daily basis. The Ohio Department of Health has wonderful recommendations for family activities. And you see the website here listed. Go to reliable websites like the CDC, the Ohio State Medical Center, my chief wellness officer website, all of these places have wonderful resources for you. And I can't finish the talk without really just emphasizing we have to do all we can to prevent spread of this virus. Even if it may not be that symptomatic for you, if you get it, it can cause a lot of problems for vulnerable populations. So stay away from people who are coughing, sneezing, or sick. If you do cough or sneeze into your elbow or a tissue that you throw away right away, Wash your hands thoroughly at least 20 seconds using soap and water. Wash your hands before, after eating. Try to stay away from putting your hands and fingers in your mouth or on your face and practice physical distancing at least six feet between people. And if you are sick with any symptoms, please stay home. When you should call your healthcare provider for yourself or your children is if you have a fever. Fever is in a temperature of 99. It's a temperature of 100.4 or higher. If you have cough, fast breathing, signs of dehydration, body aches, fatigue, call your health care provider. Go to the emergency room or call 911. If your children have any breathing problems, they're confused feeling very sleepy with illness symptoms. And Ohio Department of Health has a great hotline for any questions. And they are open between 9 a.m. and 8 p.m. I've listed reliable websites for each of you. Seek out your information 
from the most reliable evidence-based sources, including these. So I want to finish by saying, rainbows follow rain. Yes, do we have a challenging time for the next, I don't know how long, but what I do know, we will get through this. We will build strength and resiliency through this. There is hope. Our country, with the leadership of all of us, our colleagues, our families, we're going to get through this. We're going to be stronger as a result. So with that, please don't hesitate to contact me. Go to my Chief Wellness Officer website. We have just created a mechanism for people to fill out a form, ask questions. Um, about stress, anxiety, family activities, and so on. We will create a frequently asked question sheet. Also, that contains solutions, creative ideas from all of you that we can share with our Buckeye family and others throughout our community. With that, Stay well. Thank you.